I'm John McKee and this is Building with John. In this series we will be building an acoustic guitar. Hi, welcome back. The last time, if you recall, we bent the sides for our project guitar and we, in result we had two sides ready to be assembled. We have our two sides that we bent last time. Now when we bent them, they're a little extra long, so we need to trim them down. So we need to mark where we need to trim them to make them the right size for this guitar. On this guitar, I want the lower belt to be 16 inches across. So I have a 16 inch ruler here, and I'm just going to line it up till it's 16 inches, and I'm going to clamp it in place at that mark. See if I can get my clamp to work. So we'll just clamp it in place. So that's 16 inches. So let's uh, lay it out to 12. Across there is about there. That looks pretty good. So we got 12, and we got 16. We're ready to go. We want the seam to be exactly in the center of our guitar. So I'm going to use a string and I'm going to just tape it on the outside here close to where the center is. We'll get it exact here. I'm going to just string it across. I'm going to go, so half of 16 is 8. So if that's at 8, and this one side should be at 6, so we're at 6, so I've split it in half, and just verify both sides again, so we are perfect there, so we just take pencil, and we'll mark right where that is. And we'll get rid of the string. So now we've marked where our center is. We'll pop the clamps off. And we'll mark each of these pieces so we can cut them down to the right size. We'll just square it up, mark it, square it up, mark it. So do this on both both ends of both pieces. My walnut's hard to see because it's dark like the pencil. So if you uh, need to, you can use a different type of marking device. So we'll just square it up, run a line, and one more piece. ready to cut. So now we've cut our sides down to uh, length um, and now we're going to assemble them. First we're going to dry fit assemble them. So notice when they uh, fit together, they're going to butt together. I've cut this, this block. It's just a two and a half width, um, some chamfered sides to look, at, look nice. Uh, and it's the height of those sides. So in this case, these sides are three and three quarters, three and seven eighths. Um, so 
that's the size of the flock. So it's flush on both the top and bottom. Now I'm going to mark the center of that block. So it's two and a half. So we're going to mark it at one and a quarter because I want to make sure that I line up my my sides centered on this block. So I'm going to mark the side that goes against the, the wood. So we've marked, made a mark down the center. Um, so when we glue this up, we're going to line one side right on that center mark and clamp it. And then we, we'll bring the other side, butt it right up to it, and clamp it. So then we're going to do that, so we'll butt it right up to it tight, and then we're going to clamp it. And then we do that on the other side also. The upper bout is where you're going to connect your neck, so you need a little extra wood. But on the lower bout, I just need to connect my two pieces of wood. The only thing I'm going to have screwed into this is maybe a strap button. So th in this case, it's um, just a half inch uh, by the same two and a half inches. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to mark my halfway point. So you mark, mark it halfway because I want it to line up and just mark it on the top too because I want it to be on the top. So then we do the same thing. We line up and butt it up against. So we line, line up our mark. We clamp. My fingers are too fat. And we're going to butt up the other side to that same so it's up to the same mark, and we're going to clamp. And there we have our guitar shape. So now, let's do it for real. So we, will, we have our block, we have our glue, and we, and since I don't seem to have a A good, uh, I don't have a brush handy. I will just spread the glue on with a piece of scrap wood. So get a nice coating of glue. And then we're going to take our block, and just like we did it when we were dry fitting, we line it up to our center. Now in this case, for the real clamping, I'm going to put this piece of scrap in here just so the glue doesn't stick because I don't want the glue stuck all over my clamp. So we're going to line it up exactly in the center. And make sure it's all, everything is tight down and then we clamp it in place. So we butt it up against. I got it. I got a. I have a, a block here. There's a little warp in my board, but that'll be okay. And I put my clamp on. Get it. Get it on just a little bit. Push it together. Hold it in place, and clamp it down tight. So we're going to line it up. So it's perfectly centered. Push them both down tight on the workbench. So I know they're in place. And clamp it in place. Get my fat fingers out of the way. Press them tight together. Make sure they're very tight. 
clamp down on it and tighten it. While our side's dry, we can work on cutting our kerf strip. So a kerf strip is a strip that goes around the top and bottom of each side. And what it does is it gives extra support for your gluing surface. So if you're gluing, when you're gluing on the surface, you have more surface area to glue to. And when you cut away to put in a binding, you won't cut off the part of the top or bottom that's glued. So the kerf strip will fit all the way around in the inside of the top and bottom of each side. Um, so you need four. Now, kerf strip is simply a strip with a lot of cuts in it, and the cuts make it flexible so you can, so you can bend it. So to cut the kerf strip, I've rigged this jig, it's just a piece of wood as a backstop so that I don't cut all th the way through my piece of kerfing wood. Um, this piece of wood is a piece of walnut to match the rest of the guitar, and it's uh, a quarter inch by a half inch. flexible kerf strip and now we just need three more. Now that we have a mess of kerf strips we're going to attach them on the inside edge. We start with glue. Now with these kerf strips I'm going to put kerf in because I like the look and it gives a little extra stability um, with the, uh, the solid side in. Or I guess I'm doing kerf out, the, the solid side in. So, we're just going to start with adding some glue. Simple enough. So we add some glue. Since I'm gluing kerf side to the wall, we'll just... Oops. Sorry, look at the camera while I was gluing tripped a little bit. Now traditionally the kerf side is out, um, but I like to do it inward just to give it a little extra stability. Now I'm just going to use my finger and smear a nice even coat on here. We have glue on our kerf strip and we're just going to start over near one end or the other. bending it into place. And it's okay if it breaks a little because you can just piece them together. So we line it up, make it even flush with the top because I don't want to do a lot of sanding, and then clamp them on. Now I have these little, nice little clamps, work perfect for this job, but if you don't have little clamps like this, closed pins work very well. So we'll just clamp them all the way around. So where my kerf strip broke a little bit here, we'll just fit it together. And we will just keep clamping all the way around the guitar side. So let me just adjust and I, you can't quite see but I need just a little piece to fit the rest here so I can just take kerf strip, break, break off a little piece and glue it in place there. it in place and that is all we need. So that's 
do the other side. Same way. Okay, and there we have our kerf strips. Well, our sides and kerf strips dry, we're going to assemble our back and sides. So if you look at the back, the pattern is a mirror image. These pieces were cut from a, uh, a slab like this. So when they open up, they have a mirror image of their pattern. And it gives a really beautiful uh, accent on the back when you have book matched uh, pieces. Our top, also book matched. I'm not sure if you can see the uh, figure in this. So the first thing you want to do with your edges is to match, get them to match up perfectly. So to do that, we will use the joiner. The joiner will cut a smooth square edge on the sides that we're going to join together. We took off as, as little as we could to get the nice smooth square flat edge. So we match them together and that will just blend seamlessly. We have our book match set and we're going to assemble them. So I'm going to assemble using the tape technique. So I line them up how I want it and take some masking tape and make it tight across the seam. As tight as you can, can make it across the seam. Now just to uh, make sure it's held pretty, pretty well there, we're going to run this, run some tape all the way. Okay, so I have it nice and tight, but still folds open. And now we're going to take our glue, run, run our little bead, so then let it fold down. So now it's pressing together. And then on this side, do the same thing. Pull it tight, get it across the joint, pull it tight across the joint. So now we have nice tight across the joint and we want to make sure that it stays flat. So I'm going to take a heavy toolbox. Actually I might take two heavy toolboxes because that board is a little bit warped. So we take some weight and we just set something heavy and flat on top of it. It's on the bench and it will dry flat. So now we're going to do the same thing with our book match top. We've got it tight across the joint. We'll fold it open. Let it fold flat. And then get some weight, in case again, some heavy toolboxes, set it on, and let it dry. Okay, after letting this dry overnight, where we have our sides assembled and we have our kerf strips on one edge assembled, we'll take the clamps off. We have, so if we look, we have our guitar with our kerf strip around, guitar shaped, so we'll flip them over and we'll do the kerf strip on the other side. So there we have it, we 
have added our curve strips and we will let this sit and finish drying and next time we'll work on doing some more assembly.